The World Cup is considered the biggest sporting event in the entire world, with soccer, or football as some call it, being the most popular sport worldwide with an estimated 3.5 billion fans. Due to the simplicity of the game and how little equipment it takes to play, making it easier to access for all. While I respect the World Cup and all of its fans, as well as soccer as a whole, there is another worldwide competition coming up in just over a month at the time of this video being published that I consider a much more intense and entertaining competition due to it being my favorite sport. And as you may have guessed by the title of this video, that is the World Baseball Classic. The World Baseball Classic is exactly how it sounds, a competition that happens every four years of players representing their home countries as they compete to see who will own the bragging rights as the best baseball playing country in the entire world, as well as its share of up to $14 million for their team. But where, when, and how did this event get started? And why don't more people talk about it? Well, the first international baseball competition officially occurred at the 1912 Summer Olympics at the Ostermalm Athletic Grounds in Stockholm, Sweden, where the United States took on the host country and defeated them by a score of 13-3 led by Ira Davenport, who went 2-3 for three with a double and also won a bronze medal in the 800 meter at the same Olympics. The baseball game was played as a demonstration sport, which basically means that it was there to promote the game on an international stage as opposed to a real competition. There were several instances of these demonstration games throughout Olympic history, but the first instance of competitive play occurred at the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona, Spain, the same year the Dream Team would dominate on the basketball court for the United States. Now when most people think of baseball, they immediately think of being a United States dominated sport that is rarely played anywhere else, much like American football. Baseball, however, is actually pretty popular throughout the entire world. Countries such as Japan, South Korea, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico are places where baseball is massive in popularity. And not only is baseball extremely popular in these countries, but they develop some of the best talents in the sport today, such as 2021 AL MVP Shohei Otani from Japan, and 2022 NL Cy Young Award winner Sandy Alcantara, who was born in the Dominican Republic. According to player demographics for Major League Baseball in 2022, while a majority of players were from the United States, there were over 170 Dominican-born players on MLB 26-man rosters throughout the 2022 season, as well as over 100 Venezuelan-born ballplayers and over 20 from Puerto Rico, Cuba, and Mexico, respectively. And while the quantity of players may not have been there for countries like Japan and South Korea due to different rules made with their professional leagues making it difficult for players to come to the United States, they were responsible for two key players who helped carry the San Diego Padres two games from reaching the World Series in 2022 in Yu Darvish and Ha Seung Kim. And Japan, of course, is also responsible for producing possibly the most talented player to ever play the game in the aforementioned Shohei Otani. So with that being said, baseball is kind of a big deal internationally. Heading into the 1992 Olympic Games, while the majority of baseball fans expected the United States to win, they failed to even win a medal. Cuba took home gold on the baseball diamond in dominant fashion, winning all eight of their games played, with Chinese Taipei and Japan receiving silver and bronze honors respectively. This United States squad wasn't anything to scoff at, but there were only a few big names on the squad, such as Jason Giambi, Nomar Garcia Parra, and current Angels manager Phil Nevin. Baseball would continue to be played at the Summer Olympics every four years until 2008, after Major League Baseball had announced in 2006 that it would no longer allow its players to participate in the event due to the event typically taking place in the middle of the baseball season. They did, however, make an exception in 2020 when the games were held in Tokyo. Due to the popularity of the sport in Japan, baseball and softball were added to the games, and certain MLB players did end up playing in the games, most notably 2022 Rookie of the Year Julio Rodriguez, who took home bronze with his home country of the Dominican Republic. With the Olympics out of the question for the biggest names in Major League Baseball, the World Baseball Classic was created with the support of Major League Baseball and the International Baseball Federation. This tournament was designed specifically to showcase the best baseball talents from around the world, and with MLB allowing all of its players to participate, it would be considered by many to be the first legitimate international baseball tournament. The original teams that the tournament called for were the United States, Japan, Korea, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Venezuela, and Cuba. Eventually, they settled on a total of 16 teams from all over the globe, and thus, the first World Baseball Classic was born.
The USA roster for this new tournament was stacked. This included future Hall of Famers Derek Jeter, Ken Griffey Jr., Chipper Jones, and Hall of Fame worthy players like Alex Rodriguez, Roger Clemens, Houston Street, and Joe Nathan. And with their absolutely loaded roster, they finished 8th. They finished behind many teams with stacked rosters, such as Venezuela, who was headlined by Miguel Cabrera and Johan Santana, South Korea, who was headlined by Hesop Choi and Chan Ho Park, Mexico, who was headlined by Vinny Castilla, Puerto Rico, who was headlined by Yadier Molina and Carlos Delgado, and the Dominican Republic, who had Albert Pujols and Alfonso Soriano leading the way. These teams were all stacked, but none of them could measure up to the two teams that made it to the finals in Japan and Cuba. Japan was headlined by Ichiro Suzuki, and Cuba only had one somewhat noteworthy name that would end up in Major League Baseball, which is Yuli Gurriel. Japan would go on to win the first ever World Baseball Classic on the back of ace Daisuke Matsuzaka, who led the tournament with three wins, and Koji Uehara, who led the tournament with 16 strikeouts and 17 innings pitched, both of which, as you may remember, ended up on the Boston Red Sox. This was an amazing finish to the first ever World Baseball Classic, with Ichiro leading his team to victory along with Japanese legend manager Sadaharu Oh, who might warrant his own video because this dude is such a badass, but to give you an idea of his resume, it includes over 850 career home runs, that is not a typo, including leading the NPB or the Japanese version of Major League Baseball in home runs 15 times on his way to winning 9 MVP awards. He was basically Japanese Barry Bonds, but better at hitting home runs. Anyways, this tournament was the start of an unbelievable competition of the best of the best that baseball had to offer, and since has been an electrifying competition every four years that, for some reason, people seem to forget about. Japan would go on to defend their title in 2009, defeating South Korea 5-3 in the championship, and in 2013, the Dominican Republic took over, defeating Puerto Rico in the finals in their third installment of the World Baseball Classic. But in 2017, the United States would finally emerge as a legit contender, despite their squad not necessarily having the Hall of Fame-worthy talent that they did back in 06. The roster included names such as Giancarlo Stanton, Buster Posey, Nolan Arenado, and the 2022 NL MVP Paul Goldschmidt. Team USA battled their way to the championship rounds behind massive performances by Eric Hosmer of all people, as well as fantastic pitching by Marcus Stroman, who went 1-1 one one with a 2.35 ERA in three starts throughout the tournament. And overall, the United States would just find ways to win, beating Colombia by a score of 3-2 before dropping their first meeting with the Dominican Republic 7-5. After this, the United States would go on to demolish Canada, winning by a score of 8 to nothing, and sending themselves to the championship round, where they would beat Venezuela before matching up with the powerhouse of the Dominican Republic once again. This would go down as possibly the greatest game in World Baseball Classic history, featuring one of the best game-saving catches in baseball history made by Adam Jones, as well as the greatest home run in United States World Baseball Classic history by Giancarlo Stanton to take the lead. After this massive and emotional win, the United States would go on to face Japan, winning a long pitcher's duel which featured future Met Kodai Senka facing off against Tanner Roark in a game which ended 2-1 after an 8th inning RBI from Adam Jones. The US was heading to the finals where they would face Puerto Rico in their second straight trip to the World Baseball Classic Finals. However, for a second straight time, they would lose in the finals after the U.S. beat them by a score of 8 to nothing to win their first ever World Baseball Classic. And this brings us to now. The 2023 World Baseball Classic starts on March 8th and will be played at four locations around the globe, with qualifiers starting in Arizona, Miami, Japan, and Taiwan. Miami happens to only be a few hours away from me, so maybe I'll be able to catch a game or two in person this time around. This year's World Baseball Classic is expected to be crazier than ever with all the talented players who will be participating, such as Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, and Manny Machado to name a few. Current power rankings seem to have the Dominican Republic leading the way, with the usual suspects hovering around the top five in the United States, Japan, Venezuela, Mexico rounding out the top five. Although they don't make the top five in the power rankings, I would always keep an eye on Cuba as well as Puerto Rico and even the Netherlands as sneaky picks for contenders this year. Overall, I strongly feel that the World Baseball Classic is the most underrated international sporting event in the world, and I strongly encourage anyone watching this to check out some of the games if possible. 
If you want somewhere to talk and watch these games, I will be doing some live watch parties of the World Baseball Classic throughout its entirety, mainly for the United States, Japan, and the Dominican Republic's games. So if you made it this far into the video, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be notified when I go live and when I have new uploads. Once the rosters are official, I will be coming out with my own official World Baseball Classic power rankings and plenty of World Baseball Classic content in addition to my usual MLB content. If you like the video, please do me a huge favor and hit that like button down below as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And let me know in the comments who you're rooting for in the World Baseball Classic, as well as who you think will win the WBC this year. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.